How we doing, church? Go ahead and wave your hands. Great to see everyone. There we go. Uh, go ahead and mute yourself if you're not muted uh, so that we don't have the background noise there. I'm loving watching some of you, though. I mean, it's a little entertaining as we watch brothers and sisters try to figure this thing out. Uh, no offense. Uh, but it's so good to see all of you. Uh, you know, it. these little boxes mean so much just because it is our fellowship. It's our connection. And, uh, you know, I encourage you right now, if you're like me, you're on a laptop, and I see four pages. So I'll click and go to the next one. And, you know, there's Sandy Kelly, Donna with her colorful hair and you know, Lisa, I see you. Uh, you know, it's so good to see so many of you. Uh, Tom McDuffie, I'm going to go to the next page. And there we see, oh, Rosie's here. Uh, my goodness, I'm just looking around. Uh, it's so good to see. We have the birthday girl, Ingrid, here on page two for me. And, no, you know, the pages are different for everyone. Uh, <clears throat> and then... Uh, the third page. As you move into the fourth page, uh, there's many who they just have their uh, mics on. I encourage everyone because we're going to be going into breakout. And, uh, you know, I'm not preaching the word tonight. We're going to have a, once again, a very interactive midweek. But, uh, you know, I, I do want to start off and just say, I hope you've had a great week. Um, I do want to say a little prayer here right now. Steve Newberry, mo most of us, many of us know Steve and Kelly, but Steve has got to go in tomorrow. You know, we, we all remember uh, those who know him has had a couple of kidney transplants um, <clears throat> and uh, the miracle story that Kelly matched him, um, but he's having a stint put in tomorrow. So he's having some other complications. So let me just say a little prayer here, and then uh, we'll continue. Father, we just want to come before your mighty throne. Father, you know all the needs, the physical needs, the emotional needs, and even our spiritual needs. And right now, God, we bow before your mighty throne, full of grace. God, I know that uh, this life, it is a mist. But God, while we're here, we're so grateful that we can have life to the full because of Jesus. And God, even as we go through all the, 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 the physical ailments, God, it's so encouraging to know that we can pray to you. And God, though the flesh does fail, uh, the, the spirit gives life, and we're so grateful for that. And we just pray that uh, you'll be with Steve, the doctors tomorrow, that the procedure can not only be a great success, but he'll come out even stronger. Uh, God, bless our time tonight. Help us to connect. Uh, God, help us to be uh, considering how we can spur one another on. God, our fellowship tonight could really help someone in a tremendous way because, God, we're all under attack. So help us to really be like your son and love up on each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so Evan has given me full reign to have control of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up uh, the, uh, I'm going to start my slide here from the beginning. It's not in the beginning, it's from the beginning. But you know, uh, this past Sunday, we had two outdoor in-person sector services. Now Merrimack Valley, th this is their second, I think. Uh, but the North sector had their first out at Endicott Park. Here's a picture of it as we continue with our summer theme family reunion. And uh, isn't that an encouraging sight, seeing everybody there? Worship. We had a great time. What a beautiful day, huh? Sunday. Wasn't it gorgeous? Uh, Evan DiBiase was so fired up, he got a front row seat right in front of the podium. I don't know if you noticed that. But anyway, so we got encouraged with the faith. Uh, and then, uh, you know, fellowship happened after, you know, it was so cool just to be together. Uh, and then, you know, we had some food, you know, 
Mark Whittier was really enjoying. I don't know if Joe had already eating or if he's salivating over Mark right there. But uh, and then, uh, you know, a volleyball game broke out and we had some fun. I do want to thank those that set up. What a beautiful volleyball uh, net. And they had the lines down. But, you know, we had the, the, the faith, the fellowship, the food and the fun. And so with that, we're going to continue tonight. And we're going to talk about letting your love shine, okay? That's the one thing, guys, that we have that this world needs the most, and that is the love that God has given us. And, you know, it's so encouraging when you think about how much love has been bestowed upon us. I don't care, <clears throat> you know, your life before Christ, we all came out of the world we all came out of all kinds of, you know, crazy dynamics, relationships, all kinds of sin, you know. And because of the love of God, we now have within us God's love and we can let it shine. What an honor. What a privilege. And uh, so point number one is let God's, oops, I gotta, should have had an S there, God's love shine in you. Okay, that's what we need to do to start here as we approach the first breakout question. What do I mean by this? You can't give someone others something you don't have. Now, here's the thing. If you're a disciple, <clears throat> the love of God lives in you. And Satan doesn't want you to take full possession of it. And that's something that we've got to make a decision that we're going to not let Satan rob us from the love of God. We've got to have God's love really living and shining in us. First John chapter four, I love this. It says, God is love. I mean, right there, that one you know, sentence, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. You know, I think it's so important that we understand that's who God is. You know, when people want to know who is God, the Bible says he's love. He defines love. He's the standard for love. You know, if we want to have love in us, we just got to have God shining inside of us. Everything about God and his nature is embodied in one word, love. You know, when you think of God, you should think of love first and foremost. You know, you need one thing dwelling in your heart above all things. God's love. Why? It gives, it gives security, you know, in our relationship with him. You know, perfect love, John says, drives out fear. Why? Because fear has to do with punishment. See, God is full of grace and mercy. He's rich in it. That's why love is what defines God and who he is. Think about it. We can't earn our salvation. You know, you'll never be good enough to be saved. I think we can so easily as human beings fall into Satan's trap where we, we have this prove it mode, you know, that, that we think that our salvation is based on what we do rather than whose we are. Because we're God's children, that should be the thing, God's love for us as sons and daughters, that should be the thing that motivates us the most. And, you know, I want to ask you, do you believe that? Is that anchored in your heart, in your soul? I think this world does a couple of things to us. One, I think we equate our understanding, comprehension, and experiences when it comes to love with God's love, which is a mistake, unless it's just the purest form of love you can experience. Because, see, God's love is the purest love we could ever find. And many times we equate love on this earth to God, and that's where it gets cloudy. The second thing I think that we've got to understand is that in our relationship with God, and we're going to go to the next verse. He says, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. 
Everyone who has who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is what? Love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. See, there it is. It's all about Jesus. It's not about us. It's about God's love manifested through Jesus. This is love, not that we loved God. Now, this is wild when you think about this. God's love is not determined by our love for him. He says, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. John's making the point here that for us to love, we must be born of God. And if we're a disciple today and we were baptized into Christ, we were born of God. And that we would know God. because, And then because of that, we would then know God's love. So I want to encourage you. Meditate in your quiet times on God's love. Let God's love fill you up. The second thing that I think can really, you know, be make it a struggle is the physical struggles that we go through. You know, because they wear us down. Physical struggles wear us down and it makes us question God's love. I want to make something clear here. Nothing you will ever go through physically, no matter how, how much suffering you go through physically, it should not cause your love, your understanding of God's love to wane. If anything, I want to encourage you to do what Paul talks about, and that is let your sufferings cause you to have deeper fellowship with Jesus and the suffering he went through for you. Okay? I was studying the Bible. I was with someone who has cancer this week. And I talked to them about this. Because the physical struggle, they were feeling it. Overcoming them. And when I helped them to understand that, you know, as you go through this journey... You have an opportunity to share rich fellowship with Jesus. Although Jesus' suffering wasn't because of an illness, it was because of a choice. And that choice was for us. But there's so much embodied in his suffering that when we do suffer physically, we can get closer to Jesus. And if we don't do that, we just kind of take it on in our flesh and it over it can overcome our hearts our minds and even take over us spiritually so in the breakout here i have a question what helps you to understand and feel god's love the most okay i'm going to say it again what helps you to understand and feel god's love the most so evan's going to lead us into a breakout now Let's all be giving, let's share, let's be thinking about what we're going to share, and uh, we'll take about five minutes here and go into these groups, and then we'll come back for the second uh, point before the second breakout. Have a great time. Point number two, let your love shine in one another, okay? Point one was let God's love shine in you. So now we're going to talk a bit about here that, you know, if God's love is truly in us, the natural overflow will be, we'll love one another. And Paul, uh, John rather says here, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. So practically speaking, what John is saying is, we love God by loving one another. In other words, it, that, that, that's how God's love is manifest through us, practically speaking. It's simply by us loving one another. That's how God's love is made complete, you know? 
It's so important that we understand this in all its fullness. Why? Because I think we can look at the, the term denying self as a negative thing when we really should see that it's, it should mean one thing, opportunity to love others. You know? And when you think about it, you know, those of us who have had children and you've denied yourself when you had a baby, right? Let me ask everyone to mute yourself if you're not muted because it's giving background noise, please. But when you wake up in the middle of a night and a baby's crying, you know, and the baby needs you, mothers don't think, oh, no, I've got to go feed my child or, you know, take care of. No, no, no. You know, they understand the need. And because of that, the love, they go and do it and they don't even question it. And I think, you know, so much of who we are as disciples should be embodied in because of how much God has loved us, because of how much God denied himself, because of how Jesus completely emptied himself of himself for us. And that is, the, you know, the definition of love, what Jesus did for us. But it's not focusing on what Jesus did. It's why he did it, you know. And, and when we think about putting others' needs above ourselves, uh, in our breakout, you know, we had 30 seconds, 25 seconds left. And Bob Weisbro spoke up that he said, you know, it's I see God's love when I empty myself of myself, he said, you know, and that's so true. If you really want to see God's love living in you, it's when you, you know, you empty yourself of yourself for others. And let me say this, it should start at home, you know, for your spouse and being there for each other and, and, and you know, really loving one another like Christ would love, you know, and not taking each other for granted, whether it's for your roommate, you know. Uh, you know, not letting, you know, us get overtaken by little things. Um, also, it should be, you know, for our children or for our parents, if you have them living with you. Whoever is in your household, it starts there, you know, in the family groups, really loving others. You know, that's why we show up, because we love others. We put our others ahead of ourselves. You know, I love this next verse. Oh, well, I'll just read it here. I don't have it. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show a genuine concern for your welfare. But then Paul says here, for everyone looks out for their own interests. See, that's just the way of the world, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. So the whole point there is we deny ourselves, we put others ahead of us for one reason, so that our love can shine in them. And I want to close out. I think one word that we need a lot, we need to do a lot of. Now, some people have this gift, and it's the gift of encouragement. But you know, everybody needs encouragement. Everybody. Never take for granted that someone needs words of encouragement. Okay, you could change someone's entire day. And the Bible talks about encouraging one another daily as long as, as it's called today so that none of us will be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Why? Because Satan is doing everything to discourage us. So that's why we've got to encourage each other. It should be coming out of our mouths a lot with each other. So with that, I want us to break out and answer this question. What helps you to love others more than yourself? Okay. What, what, what helps you? What in your thinking that leads to your actions to love others 
more than yourself. Okay, Evan, can you break us out? So, you know, that point, we had some great sharing there, you know, just um, to love others more than yourself. I think I walked away, you know, just hearing just, you know, how if we think about others more than ourselves, if we had the compassion, you know, if we're uh, having the mind of Christ as we go about our day. So let, let, let's you know, continue to think about that as we move into the third point here, and that is let your love shine in a dark world. You know, I think our love can shine the most. You know, the saying, the light shines the brightest where it's the darkest. And as disciples, I think, you know, it's so important that we remember, you know, just how much God has blessed our lives that we should be called children of God, you know, that we are his sons and daughters. Because so much about life is about perspective. You know, the eyes are the lamp of the body, how you see things. And, you know, your heart. And Satan's going to do everything he can to use this lost world in darkness to consume you and everyone in it. I mean, Satan's greatest enemy is a disciple. And he wants to, you know, make sure that somehow he uses the world to put out our light so that we don't shine and that we don't have the kind of impact while we're on this earth. You know, the best defense is a good offense. You know, if you have the ball uh, and the defense can't, you know, you don't have to play defense you know, you're going to be able to do a lot more. So it begins, though, with keeping the right perspective every day, but most importantly, one day at a time. You know, not jumping ahead. And the word I want to use here is gratitude. You know, your heart and your lips are the overflow of gratitude and the gratitude that we should have for God, you know, for what you have in Christ, regardless of your circumstances. Now, I know that's easier said than done often, but I think a lot of times we excuse ourselves. And when we do that, the only one that suffers is ourself. If you don't find the blessings and the things to be grateful for, then you're gonna, your circumstances will overtake you. In our breakout, Mark Whittier said someone was just complaining about a lot of stuff. And he said, let's go to Children's Hospital to the, the, the burn center and see if you have anything to complain about. You know, our circumstances, Satan will use to try and overtake our flesh, and we can't let that happen. And it begins with having the right attitude. And when you do have it, it's evident in what you say. It's evident in, in how you, you carry yourself. And the only way we're going to reach a lost world is if people see us different, that we're not like people, complaining, you know, always going to the, the, the place of negative thoughts. You know, I had a guy literally today that I shared with, and he says to me, you know, to us, he said, you know, I'm, I'm negative a lot. He basically just said, you know, that's the way I view things. And I felt so sad for him. And, you know, when people meet us, we should stand out as joyful as grateful, as positive, optimistic, faithful people, and trying to, you know, help people to see God through us, you know. Um, you know, one way that I think that you're going to be able to do this, and I want to read this scripture, he says, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but how much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God 
who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do you realize that each day God's trying to use you in a specific way to act in order to fulfill his good purpose? I mean, what a great thing to think about, that God's going to use me today. Now, it might be something as simple as, you know, loving and serving someone in your family that day who's in need. You know, it could be the smallest of things, but you're doing it and, and, and you're really shining, you know. It might be when you're out and about. Uh, today, I had opportunity to do that with an 80-year-old man. And I, I really made the effort to make him feel, you know, loved and supported. Um, why? Because he physically needed help. Um, while I saw others not doing anything for him. So, you know, you never know. Um, but watch what he says here. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. You know, the world is definitely messed up and we cannot, you know, allow ourselves to just blend in. We've got to stand out. Why? Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. You know, something I want to say here as disciples, we should stand out. We should not be like the world. We shouldn't talk like the world. We shouldn't think like the world, and people should notice the difference in how we speak, how we act, how we think. You know, life's a struggle, but we should stand out in how we handle the struggles. So, you know, before I go into the last breakout here, I want to ask you a question. What is your fishing hole where you're going to shine? And why do I ask this question? I think we can't shine until people get to know us. Now, I do think we should make the most of every opportunity. Mary Wisebro just shared in our breakout that the last five years, she's really enjoyed having conversations with people and just getting to know them. That should be what we do. But the way that people can really get to know us is we have a fishing hole. We have an opportunity where we're spending time with people and they can get to know you and see that you're different. You know, Maria is a part of a, a book club in our neighborhood that meets once a month. And they met last week and Maria went to, to Bill Ricca because one of the women that used to live here moved and she rode with our neighbor. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. They, they get, they've gotten to know each other really well. Um, but people can't see that we're different if they don't know us. Um, you know, I think it's so important that we try to find, it could be something like a park that we go to. It could be our children's school and, and something to do with it. You know, it, it could be anything, but I think we all need to find a place that we can invest ourselves in where people can get to know you. So with that, uh, you know, I'm going to have us go into our breakout here. Before we do, when you go into this breakout, that'll close out the midweek. This Sunday, we're going to have a virtual worship service. We have guest speakers. John and Carol McGurk from uh, Europe, from Paris, France, will be uh, sharing with us this weekend on Sunday, 945. And I want to encourage you, you know, let's show up. Uh, even though it's virtual, it's not Zoom. It's going to be, you know, the pre-recorded. And uh, let, let's show up and really worship God in a powerful way uh, virtually. So with that, the closing question is, you ready for this? Uh, what can you create to be a fishing hole where others can get to know you? What can you do? that can become a fishing hole where others can get to know you. Okay, again, it could be your job, something in your job, you know, that you're doing. But let's go ahead and it may force you to think, but that's a good thing. 
Enjoy the fellowship. Enjoy the last breakout. Uh, Evan, can you send us off one last time? <laughs>